what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants video. And today we going Today I'm just going to give my opinion on Kyle Pitts and how many times I've seen on Giants media, it's Giants social media, a lot of people that want Kyle Pitts to be the 11th overall pick. And before I get into anything, I do want to say Kyle Pitts is an absolute monster. The best tight end in college football, the best tight end in the draft class, and he will be an absolute monster in the NFL if he translates properly, right? At the college level, the dude was basically near unstoppable. So I don't want to take away anything from Kyle Pitts right now, right? As a tight end, he's just up there, right? Uh, there's a reason some people argue that he's a wide receiver playing tight end, which we've heard a lot about many tight ends in the past couple of years, the past three to four years or so. But nevertheless, he, he's that guy, right? But with that being said, <clears throat> I don't know why people want to draft Kyle Pitts. Like, this makes absolutely no sense to me. Tight end is not one of our top two, three, four, maybe even five needs right now. Like, is Evan Ingram a terrible tight end in the NFL? In my opinion, yes, but in reality, probably not. Um, I've been the head of trade or cut Evan Ingram train since essentially week six of the NFL season when he made that. Ever since he made that drop, I couldn't forgive him, right? I just couldn't forgive him. Evan Ingram is just too inconsistent for us, whether it's with staying healthy or with just catching the football. But does that mean even at, even with that, right? Is, is tight end number one specifically a top need for us? Nope. You got edge up there. You got receiver. You got corner two you got a linebacker two those are four that are automatically above um tight end right there you could argue right now right tackle because technically speaking we're not sure who our starting right tackle is going into the next season we all hope and you know we all do want it to be matt pert you know we hope he develops into that starting right tackle but technically speaking the giants don't even have a starting right tackle right now you know what i'm saying that's five right there that's above tight end like like come on when did listen He's a great weapon, yes, but we don't need a tight end that badly. And that's the first thing, right? And the second thing is, we're not drafting a tight end at 11. You, Because right now, everybody loves to talk about positional value, and everybody loves to go back, you know, in previous drafts and judge the Giants drafts. Of, of course, everybody loves to say you don't take a running back number two overall. Uh, and, you know, I think that was like a four or five year period where running backs went top five consistently in the draft right like you talk um i would say top 10 because i can't remember exactly where todd Gurley went but you know you know top five like zeke fournette mccaffrey saquon right all those guys were within a three four year period you know span period of each other um then you talk about in the next year people were angry well so people are angry now that is that we took a running back number two overall people were angry when this happened that we took a quarterback in number six because let's be honest here, what quarterback would you have taken at that time? You know, at that point in time, people would have taken Dwayne Haskins. That's the only other quarterback that people would have taken at number six overall in the 2019 draft on the day of the 2019 draft. Because not everybody realized that Dwayne Haskins was actually Dwayne Trashkins, right? So I don't know how you're still angry about that. And then if you say it's not about you know who we took you know it's not it's not about we didn't know it was daniel jones we should have taken josh allen the edge i'm like okay and then we're fair that's respectable because guess what josh allen was a monster in college and also the edge position is a position you take at number six overall right when did tight end when did it become okay to take a tight end at 11th overall when has that ever really worked out uh, the two more recent examples i could think of that went really really high were noah fant and TJ Hawkinson, I think they were both in the 2018 draft. Um, it's still, you know, the jury's still out on them as to whether they were worth being picked that high. But when has it ever worked out that a top pick first rounder tight end that went basically top 10, because we're right outside it, we're like we're at 11, worked out? Look at Travis Kelsey, look at George Kittle, two best in the game right now, right? Where were they taken? They were both taken in the third round or later. I think Kelsey was third. And Kittle was like fourth or fifth or something like that. Even if tight end one was a great need, the positional value at number 11 does not make sense to me. I don't get it. I don't get why people want to take Kyle Pitts at 11th overall when our top need in wide receiver one could be fulfilled at 11th overall. 
Like, let's think about that for a second. Because I've seen people that said, even if somebody like, say, Jalen Waddle is available at number 11, they would still take Kyle Pitts. And I'm like, are you serious? And Jalen Waddle is not even, like, my number one receiver in the class. And I, listen... A lot of people have fallen in love with Devontae Smith, and rightfully so, because he did a great job in college. But a lot of people have also forgotten that Jalen Waddle was the number one receiver at Alabama, and he was the one doing the damage before Devontae, you know, kind of had to step up to the mantle, step up to the plate, and do all that. That makes no sense. If you're taking, say, Kyle Pitts over any of those top three receivers that drops there, that's a stupid move. If you're taking Kyle Pitts over, like, Caleb Farley or Patrick Sertain, who would make this secondary one of the best in the league, you know, immediately just becoming a lockup secondary with Bradbury and then back there in the great safety play we got? That's a stupid move, man. The only way I could see us taking Kyle Pitts, and I do mean the only way, is if like all three receivers are gone, both corners are gone, you know, Micah Parsons is gone, and then there's like no way to trade down and get somebody like Rashad Bateman or something. Like, that is the only way. And the whole reason I'm doing this video is because I'm seeing a lot a lot of New York Giants fans just absolutely falling in love with Kyle Pitts and once again he's an amazing player but he's not the player for us <laughs> he he's he's not the need that the Giants are trying to fill right now don't stray from what we're actually trying to fix and a lot of fans are falling in love with Kyle Pitts they're falling in love with this great big tight end that could catch and that could run down the field and you're gonna be upset when we don't draft them because that's how Giants fans are that's how New York fans are they're gonna be like oh my god Kyle Pitts was available why didn't we take him Come on, man, chill out. That's that's not how it's supposed to go. And I think part of this also has to deal with the fact, um, this is kind of related to the video I put out yesterday, that people are forgetting how great Saquon is. Because in in addition to you know them saying they take pits over, say, Waddle, for example, or over, say, Smith, is that they say he's a better playmaker. He's a better weapon. You know, he's a bigger target. And that means he'll be a better, you know, receiving threat for us than those guys all i gotta say to that is with saquon back there no matter who you have as a number one as long as they're a legit number one threat they're gonna get open because they're let's not forget how many people that teams continuously stock in the box you know every time saquon's out there on the field they consistently put eight men in the box to try and get this man and it works because well it's eight men in the box if we have a legit number one threat at wide receiver, no matter who they are, they're going to get open purely because of the presence of Saquon Barkley. Even when he's not producing, Saquon presents the opportunity for the receivers to get open. And then if those receivers start getting open and we start hitting a couple downfield, they're going to lay off of Saquon a bit. And then guess what? Saquon's going to do damage. Like that's what it's all about. I think people, I think a real good part of it, uh, Giants fans, is just forgetting who and how good Barkley is. But kind of the whole point of this video was like, I don't want to drive Kyle Pitts under any circumstance. It's not anything against the player. It's just purely something that we don't need. And Giants fans that are like starting to fall in love with him or maybe even forcing themselves to fall in love with, with a draft pick in Kyle Pitts. Don't do it because it, it's not it don't make any sense. It's not logical. But that's what I got for you all today. Let me know what you all think. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.